This is the Uptick Network Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Penny stock news and interviews from the microcap world. Public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world. With your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a returning guest. He is Stephen Gerba. He is the CEO of Boulevard Technologies Group. Well, they uh, trade on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol BTGI. Stephen, welcome back to the show. Everett, thank you very much. I'm glad to be on. You know, we've gotten a lot of new listeners since the last time you've been on the show. So give us a little bit about statement of what Boulevard Technologies is all about. Sure. Uh, Boulevard Technologies Group, uh, the public company, um, as you mentioned, trades under BTGI. We basically have uh, four segments of business today. Um, I'll talk about each of them individually, four, four uh, verticals, if you will. Okay. Um, our largest and most exciting is the transportation area today. Uh, we did an acquisition last January, uh, in uh, January of 16, uh, for a, a company called Twist Trucking, which is, uh, they have actually have three entities, Twist Transport, Twist Logistics, and Twist Cold Storage. The three entities do around 30 to 35 million a year in sales. Historically, they've been in business about 25 years. Um, the cold storage area, we have a 155,000 square foot facility in Tampa where we store all the cold products as most of our trucking is with reefers. Um, it assists us in, in uh, storing product for our customers between running the loads to various locations. Um, we have the logistics group, which handles all the overflow from our actual twist transport group, which is the trucking and trailers. Um, the logistics group has four people. They handle the overload of our main trucking business, as well as they have many of their own customers. We have about 65 owner operators that support the twist companies, and we use them to move those types of products and loads and they're both dry van as well as uh, Reaper. Our, our main section, uh, main, main acquisition there was Twist Transport. They, uh, and there we, ha we have 91 trucks. We have 117 trailers. And um, we basically cover all 48 states on a weekly basis. 99% of our trailers are Reaper, so we handle a lot of produce, frozen products, things of that nature. We also do a pretty brisk business in what's known as light loads, where we may have six or seven customers on a trailer. We load those on Fridays and Saturdays and, and deliver them Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And as I said, that those three entities, which are now owned by BT Twist Transport LLC, which is the company I created to do the acquisition, this year that entity will be in the $30 million in sales range and profitable. Do you own 100% of that company? No, we own 30% of it today. Okay. We have a partner in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, with, and we have a schedule by which we can buy back all the way up to 100%. And over the next three years, our plan is to do just that. And it requires getting that individual that owns the 70% off the PGs, the personal guarantees, Absolutely. as well as uh, the cash that he invested into the company. Um, at that time, um, we, 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 and, and we go up on an annual basis to, on a schedule. So we, we're at a, a, a worst case of 30% and, and growing our way back. So he's definitely looking for an exit strategy, correct? Yes, and, and, and quite frankly, the, the gentleman's name is Rich Welkowitz. He owns a company called Black, Blackford Development. Rich and I have been partners in business as well as real estate deals since roughly 1995. So... We know each other well. We've, we've done well over the years, and uh, he assisted me in getting this acquisition completed. My guest today is uh, Stephen Gerber. He is the uh, CEO of Boulevard Technologies. They trade on the OTC markets under the uh, ticker symbol BTGI. So give us a general update of all your entities. I know you guys have about five, six, seven different vertical markets that you guys are in. Uh, what's the latest on those? Okay, well, what, what I just mentioned the, uh, the transportation group. Next in line would be the machinery group. We have an entity known as Boulevard Technologies Machinery, where we're importing 
roughly 40 different styles of, of CNC, machining centers, lathes, mills, um, from both South Korea and Taiwan. Our headquarters is in Clearwater, Florida. We have inventory there of about $4 million. We have a showroom and, and executive offices. That, uh, that particular company uh, last year did about $2 million in sales. It's scheduled to do about $4 million in 2017. And quite frankly, we're looking at an acquisition right now um, that I can't announce as of yet because we haven't signed a purchase agreement, but we're hoping to over the next four weeks uh, be able to announce that. And that would add, uh, if successful, about $10 million to the machinery business. Um, and that particular company is in the lathe business, which is a good complement for what we have going on. Absolutely. The, uh, the third vertical... Uh, is known as uh, Bulletin Technologies Europe. And Bulletin Technologies Europe um, is really what we have left from the ammunition area, defense area. Uh, it, this entity has done work for both uh, DOD, but its primary function right now is sale of commercial ammunition, which has been slow for us because our primary support and supplier is Rosenboro Export in Russia. And due to stipulations on Russia, because of the Ukraine, it's been difficult to import ammunition. But uh, I think everybody believes that uh, with the new Trump administration, that there'll be some relief in the Russian area, and we may be able to start importing their ammunition again. We have also imported ammunition from Macedonia, Bulgaria, uh, many of what used to be the Eastern Bloc countries right, right. Uh, due to the shortages in the U.S. So, and we will continue to do that during 2017. Our, our last vertical, which is known as the Advanced Planning Group, we have two startup companies in there that we're really trying to grow, although uh, we may have um, some changes in that this year as there's been some interest to potentially buy them from us. Uh, we have an entity known as Bulba Technologies Healthcare. We have an agreement with a South Korean company to bring in casts that fit, fit on your arm and leg. There's five different sizes each. They're more economical than the standard 3M product, which is sold in the States today. They're lighter. You can get them wet. Um, you can take a X-ray through them. They have a number of advantages, um, and we have, we have some interest in that entity, and it may be sold off here in the not-too-distant future. The other entity in there, which we only own 30% of, again, we're partnered with Blackford Development, the same group we are with the trucking company. Um, that's known as Bulletin Technologies Compliance and Security, where we're trying to sell a software package to banks that assist them in staying compliant post-2008 and the new regulations put upon them. So if you, if you look at those are the verticals that fit under the public company, Bulletin Technologies Group, Inc., and I believe we stand a very good chance in 2017 of, of, of the parent company recording approximately $40 million in sales and profitable. In 2017, it seems like your focus is on transportation and machinery. Why is that? We, we, we really are. Our, our main focus is transportation, secondary to that machinery. Uh, they, they, they provide us the best opportunities for growth. Um, I find in both industries, there's never really a shortage of work. It's really a question of, do you have, uh, do you have enough trucks, trailers, equipment available, are you priced right? But there's, there never seems to be a shortage of work in those areas. Um, the, other, the other two verticals we have are either startup or dependent upon international rules, which, which really I have no control over, the company has no control over. And I think you'll find throughout 2017 that more and more and more um, our, our focus will be, will be turned primarily to transportation and machinery. Do you think you'll end up doing a name change, uh, Bulova Technologies, into something else? Um, no, we have no. Uh, Bulova, the name Bulova has been around since 1875. Um, literally everybody knows it because of the watch business. Uh, and at one point in time, Bulova Technologies was the world-leading producer of fuses and, and safe and arming devices for our DOD as well as the world. Um, it's just a well-recognized name. We have no intentions of, of changing the name Bulletin Technologies Group, Inc., to anything else.
company that we're highlighting today is Boulevard Technologies Group. Well, they trade on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol BTGI. With us is Stephen Gerber. He is the CEO. I've gotten tens, if not 30 or 40 different emails over the past two or three weeks. They're asking me, please talk to uh, Stephen about how he's going to improve the financial status of the company. Um, can you tell us about what's going on behind closed doors? Sure, I, I can. I can give some vision to that. We, we, uh, we, of course, I think have really dramatically changed the top line of the company in that we're now averaging between six and seven million a year. Uh, I'm a, sorry, six and seven million a quarter right. in sales. Uh, so certainly, we've made a major adjustment there. The bottom line: we are reducing costs. Uh, we are looking at in increasing the margins on our sales which will all add to the profitability. One of the areas that we need to, to address, which we are, is the debt. Today, we have approximately 20 million in assets on the books, and we have about 40 million in debt. 10.8 of that, of that debt is associated with an entity known as Bulletin Technologies Ordinate Systems, which if you read our K and our Q, is basically a uh, entity that was uh, the bulk of the assets were sold off back in 2012. We have claims with the DOD in both directions. And um, we have a company that is interested in actually buying that entity because of its background in military and ammunition products. Um, we hope to conclude a sale of that division during the month of August. I'm sorry, during the month of March, this particular month. And in doing that, um, that would remove the 10.8 million from BTGI's books. Uh, so the 40 would come down to roughly 29 and change. And we will be putting out shortly a 14C, an SEC 14C. And in that 14C, we're going to be offering to debt holders of the company um, a, a preferred A and a preferred B share. And they will not have voting rights, but they will have special rights in terms of dividends and potentially interest rates that would be associated to, to that particular preferred share. That would be something that our debt holders could trade out debt and turn it into equity. If, and, and if it were to go 100% with the debt holders, that would actually reduce our, our debt on the books to about $17, $18 million, which would be primarily bank debt, Sunshine Bank, which, which uh, did the financing for our fleet and acquisition of the transportation company. And one of the individuals who owned the transportation company, Ron D'Amico Jr., would have about four, a $4 million note left from that acquisition. So we would have roughly 17 to 18 million in debt versus 20 plus million in assets, which would also be a major turnaround on the balance sheet and reduce our interest costs significantly. So. That SEC 14C will be coming out here within the next week to 10 days or so. Um, it will allow our debt holders to take a look at whether or not they have interest in converting over. It does not dilute in any way, shape, or form the common stock. And I might add that um, we're also in that 14C going to increase our approved shares from 500 million to 900 million although we don't see uh, any conversion coming into play uh you know as in the in, in the in the last year we had a number of our debt holders convert at a discount and and a, a lot of shares went into the market although we're increasing our approved shares to 900 million we don't see conversion uh at any discounts that would uh, flood the market in additional shares so um Right now, our, our shares issued are almost $500 million. We need to increase it just so that we have room for people to buy shares. And, and quite frankly, we do have debt holders that may want to convert, but they're not going to convert at a discount. So it wouldn't be to any advantage to, to convert and immediately sell off. So we look at that as a positive thing. Uh, I've been asked about a reverse, and I don't see a reverse in the near future at all. We really want to get the balance sheet squared away before we would consider any of that because, as I've mentioned in the past, our ultimate goal 
is to come off of the pink sheets and move up onto a big board. Absolutely. You know, I look at your market cap, 1.5 million, and your stock's trading in the double zeros. I'm thinking, how undervalued is this company? You know, I, I talked about another company that was totally uh, undervalued uh, a couple of weeks ago on my show, and, you know, they've jumped up uh, uh, immensely, and, and I, I can't help. What's the secret here? I mean, explain it to myself and other listeners. Uh, by the way, I do want to give a disclaimer. I bought in the open market. I own 1.3 million shares of Bull of Technologies, and I bought that in the open market. Like I said, I, I didn't receive any shares from the company. But where do we get to cash to positive cash flow, Steve? Are, are, are we there working cash flow? Well, I, I, I think during, two seven, during 2017, we will turn the corner and be positive cash, and we will be profitable. Um, as I said, a lot of the uh, cost right now uh, is interest. And as we reduce the debt, that interest goes away. And quite frankly, from an EBITDA standpoint, we are positive. Good. I mean, the, the net profit line, the net profit line uh, may not show a profit for the first quarter. I think we lost um, around uh, hundred thousand dollars plus, something like that. But our EBITDA is positive. It will be positive for the year, and uh, we look forward to seeing. Uh, some of the debt holders take advantage of this preferred an A and B stock, which would further reduce the debt. But as a minimum, with the sale of the ordinance uh, company, the stock, we're selling off the stock, um, that will eliminate the uh, the $10.8 in debt. And when do you think you'll release your next 10Q? Well, our, we just released our first quarter Q, which ended 12:31. The next Q would be period ending March 31, and that would be uh, published no later than May 15th. I, I see. My guest today is Steve Gerba. He is the CEO of Bulva Technologies. Uh, they trade on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol BTGI. In closing, Stephen, is there, is there anything that you would like to get out to my listeners that we didn't get a chance to talk about? Well, I, I think that as a whole, I'd just like to comment that I think the company really has been heading in the right direction. We have had a lot of new shareholders come into the company. Um, I do think this stock, uh, you know, it, it's going to improve. It has to do just, just based upon, you know, the growth and the sales, um, the, the positive direction in cash. And the area that we're in, transportation and machinery, really uh, are two product lines in the United States that, uh, you know, are on, on a grow, in a growing mode and will continue to grow. So you know, I have nothing but positive thoughts here going forward. It's just a matter of uh, working hard to get there. Absolutely. I want to thank you for taking time out, coming on the show. I know you're a busy guy. I wish you nothing but continuous success. And I want to check back with you in another 40 to 50 days. Very good. Thank you, Everett. The following program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire LLC, which is responsible for the following content. The opinions and information provided on today's show are those of the guests and of those of the respective companies they represent. It does not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of this station. Uptick Network encourages all listeners of the show to do their own due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of today's show may have paid to appear on the show and are not directly affiliated with Uptick.